As we continue to cover Russia's invasion of Ukraine, we're joined by Katrina Vanden Heuvel, editorial director and publisher of The Nation magazine, columnist for The Washington Post. Um, Katrina, you've reported for decades on Russia. You last joined us a few days ago. On Friday, the situation in Ukraine looks very different. Lay out your response to what you call in your latest piece, Putin's invasion. I will tell you that people who have studied Russia for decades, I think of Ambassador Jack Matlock, who was on your program, were surprised, if not shocked, uh, even by the recognition of the independence of Donetsk and Luhansk republics. But the special military operations, which occurred early morning U.S. time um, on, I believe, Wednesday, uh, has, has really shaken a community which did see, uh, if there was any glimmer of light in all of this madness, an upsurge of diplomacy. And I think uh, the abrupt ending to that has marked um, an indefensible military operation, which we've heard about from very in very human terms. Uh, NATO is clearly at the root of uh, the crisis. Uh, Putin, in his speech, rambling, aggrieved speech the other day, talked about NATO several times. You've heard it from your guests. Uh, the, the sadness and war is a crime, a tragedy, and a defeat is that it wasn't on offer, the NATO uh, position for Ukraine. And so there's this delusional quality. I do think the humanitarian story has to be focused on very clearly. The questions to President Biden at his press conference yesterday, as I understand, it was all about military operations and sanctions. But the displace displacement of perhaps more uh, millions of people than we discussed is going to be uh, upend Europe and be very grave with implications. I am want to pick up on one of your Ukraine, the Ukrainian journalist who was powerful. Uh, it is the case that it is a different moment in Russia. This is not 2014 in Crimea, when the seizure of Crimea led Putin to soar in popularity. This is a different Russia, COVID, economic problems. Uh, there is protest across the country, Amy, as you spoke of. Uh, more than 1,500 protests in 50 cities, obviously Moscow, St. Petersburg, um, more people. But also very interesting, for example, we've talked about Novaya Gazeta, the independent newspaper. It came out yesterday in Russian and in Ukrainian. It is part of a group called Syndicate 100, Reporters Without Borders, and issued a very tough statement. A hundred municipal political figures around the country have protested Putin's special operations, and there are more. There, uh, so this is growing. This is not going to boost Putin's popularity. I don't want to say never, because in the first days of war, things always happen of boosting quality. But I do think, and I'll, I'll finish, the um, momentous implications for our country, for Europe, for Russia, for Ukraine. I mean, you're looking at the risk of nuclear war. I know you're going to talk about that. Uh, NATO more U.S. troops on the front lines, perhaps. NATO will uh, soar in, you know, demand for a while. Uh, energy. Uh, we're going to see higher oil and natural gas prices, and the, there'll be a pressure to increase reliance on fossil fuels. What do we do about that in terms of coping with climate change needs, the crisis which we don't pay enough attention to? And Ukraine and the economy. These sanctions may well have collateral damage in Europe and uh, our country. And that could be, and of course, renewed militarism. If there's anything bipartisan at the moment in Washington, D.C., it's this renewed militarism, adding more weapons, adding more money to the defense budget. My column ends um, at thenation.com. Uh, let's find a way forward. There has to be, there has to be a way to talk, uh, even on the margins, about conventional force agreements or the international nuclear INF. Uh, not today, but let us keep that diplomatic escalation, not military escalation, in mind.
Uh, the Intercept's Ken Klippenstein reported Wednesday Saudi Arabia is working with Russia to drive up gas prices amidst the Ukraine crisis. He interviewed Bruce Rydell, the Brookings Institution and former CIA analyst, who said, quote, Putin and Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman have much in common, including murdering their critics at home and abroad, intervening in their neighbors by force, and trying to get oil prices as high as possible. Putin will do MBS a great service if he invades Ukraine and sends oil prices through the roof. Meanwhile, The Daily Poster had a report Thursday on how Biden's Ukraine plans face Wall Street roadblock to sanctions aimed at Putin and his oligarchs, and that um, noted, quote, inflicting financial pain on Putin and his wealthy cronies could force the Russian government to the negotiating table. But while such a move might help deter further Russian incursions, Biden faces a significant obstacle. Corporate lobbyists success in shrouding the American finance industry in secrecy, which makes it far easier for Russian oligarchs and their business empires to evade economic sanctions. Can you comment on this, Katrina? With no, this is serious. This is very serious. The uh, price of oil is over $100 a barrel. There's no question that this is Russia's, you know, quote, ace in the hole. Um, the um, no, I mean, I think this the the one thing I'll say about the sanctions, the oligarchs, this is an interesting point because Putin's tried to repatriate their money for years. This may play a role. And I think it's critical to understand the complicity of a US, European, Saudi corporate structure in enabling the oligarchs to loot, to hide, uh, money that could not happen without it doesn't just you know happen on its own. So this is a this is a serious issue and there is great reporting and Russia um, med Russian media two or three major papers have been part of it Pandora's you know Pandora's box the international consortium of investigative journalists. I will say however one thing it may push Saudi Arabia and Russia together but I think the larger story is how this may this these events of the last hours may push Russia and China together. I think that's a big story. They're not going to be partners. They're not going to be friends by any measure. But there is a transactional element as Russia, seeing the Westernizers inside Russia undermined in the last years by different factors. Putin will turn east most likely, and that's not just to China, but it's to parts of the world which you know the NATO Western. Uh, crowd doesn't consider it often legitimate, but it's real. I noticed that China, I believe, uh, is going to buy massive amount of wheat from Russia. And there will be other purchases, not just from China, that will enable Russia, sadly, probably, to um, overtake the sanctions. But, Amy, the real problem with sanctions, as we know, is sanctions are another form of warfare. And they often, and I've seen this over the years, hit ordinary Russians who then do feel that the U.S. or those sanctioning are the enemy. Well, I want to thank you so much, Katrina Vanden Heuvel, editorial director and publisher of The Nation magazine. We'll link to your latest piece in The Nation, Putin's Invasion. Coming up, Russian troops have seized the Chernobyl nuclear power plant, that disaster. Um, we will talk about nuclear power and nuclear war uh, in the midst of this Russian invasion. Stay with us.